come with us for a day at Hampton Court. So very quickly, I've always wanted to go to Hampton Court. I've wanted to go for about a decade, so today was a big day. Welcome aboard the South Western Railway service to Hampton Court. Okay, so we made it. <laughs> Julie's like, are we filming now? <laughs> uh, we made it, not without a small amount of stress. We left five minutes late, which gave us like a four or five minute, yeah, a four or five minute gap um, to get to our train out of Waterloo to Hampton Court. But we did it. There was a lot of fast walking, um, lots of stair climbing, but we're fine. We're here. So once we're inside and up the staircase, we're led through a procession of different rooms. Um, Georgian houses, Georgian palaces didn't really have hallways, so it's one room after another. And they're all filled um, with different information about the people who lived and worked in the palace. Um, there was an audio guide available, but Charlie and I decided not to go for the audio guide. We thought we knew better, we did not, so if you're going in the future I would 100% recommend doing the audio guide. Um, but the palace was gorgeous nonetheless, so much art, so much information to absorb, um, yeah just a real pleasure to be there. don't know Hampton Court is in two parts although it's all under one roof there's the Georgian part which we see here and then there's a the Tudor part which we see now this is the Tudor Great Hall originally Hampton Court belonged to Cardinal Wolsey who was one of Henry VIII's most trusted advisors after he was executed Henry took over the palace and in many ways used it as his pleasure palace it was the place to go for hunting and large feasts those feasts would have been held in this Great Hall the food, meanwhile, was cooked in this huge complex of kitchens. I think there are days when the kitchens are working and fully functional. Today was not one of those days, but even so, it was great to walk through and imagine what it would have been like to cook for hundreds and hundreds of people three times a day. We're here, we're outdoors now. Um, we've done as much of the interior as we can and I tried to get as many clips as possible but some parts of the palace aren't, uh, either aren't open or you're not allowed to like do photography or um, take any videos or anything because they're still like working chapels and whatnot. Um, so I've done it the best I can but we've just come back out here to have some lunch um, and take a couple more photos and have a walk through the garden. So. That'll be good. I nearly got bitten by a swan, so...
have been trapped here for weeks. Oh, please, shush. please, help. <laughs> I'm a bit lost and confused. Do we go? I think. This way? This way? Do they come around to the same spot though? Oh, it's not fair if, if it goes properly into there. No, this looks fairly central. Does it? Go forth. <laughs> <laughs> Lost. This is definitely back on ourselves. Is it? Oh no! Wait, we could see it. Oh wait, no. You know, once we find the middle of the maze, we then have to find our way out. I don't know if I'm up for the night. Oh no! <laughs> found it. Yes. Have we found it? This is it. Hooray! Hooray! Thank goodness. Yes, we did try to outsmart the maze. After leaving the maze, we went for one last peaceful walk through the parklands attached to Hampton Court. In total, we spent about five hours there, although we could have spent so much longer. We only really scratched the surface. As we were leaving, we said goodbye to our squirrel friend and then hopped on a train back to central London.